When you think about a giant scale of dinosaur, what comes to mind? Perhaps a giant velociraptor? Or a T-Rex? Or maybe even something that looks like a fictional dragon from the movies. But today, I'm going to prove to you that dinosaurs do still exist, and we have to somehow build a canopy jungle in this scalding heat for this dinosaur. There's no doubt that alligators are the modern day dinosaurs of water, but what about land? You see, monitor lizards exist all over the world and are powerful reptiles with long necks, sharp claws, and sturdy limbs. Not to mention their alien-like tails, but we'll get into that more later. There are so many different types of monitors, actually over 80 different species. There's Asian water monitors, rock monitors, mangrove monitors, Nile monitors, Bengal monitors. You get my point. There's a lot of different monitor species. But they are all related to their giant prehistoric ancestor, Megalania. This was a giant monitor lizard that roamed the earth over 40,000 years ago. It is known as the largest terrestrial lizard to ever exist, reaching over lengths of 25 feet. It is often compared to the famous Komodo dragon, and the Komodo dragon really is straight out of the movies. Komodo dragons are the largest lizards on earth and are only found on a few Indonesian islands. Remember Skull Island from King Kong, where these massive mutant creatures existed only on one island in the middle of the ocean? Well, that's pretty much the same as the island of Komodo. This island is only 22 miles long and is populated with these mutant lizards. They can reach over 10 feet in length and close to 400 pounds. Now that is a real life dinosaur. It preys on all sorts of mammals like goats, deer, and even buffalo. Most monitor lizards can grow quite large, not 10 feet, but still pretty darn big. Our dinosaur is in fact a monitor lizard, but different than most because, well, it's a Gillen's monitor and it's one of the world's smallest monitors at around eight inches in length but it has a hidden superpower. You see, reptiles are cold-blooded, which means they cannot thermoregulate their bodies and they are in constant need of either cooling or warming their bodies. But this Gillen's monitor doesn't just warm itself up, it cooks itself. Imagine the hottest possible temperature you could live in and realize this modern day dinosaur requires heat up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Scalding heat. For reference, you're supposed to cook a steak until the internal temperature hits 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Most animals would die within a couple hours of these temperatures. But this Gillen's monitor thrives in the heat. They can somehow absorb this extreme heat while not overheating or burning. Not to mention, scientists have done studies on Gillen's monitors and they can stay active for longer and lose less water than other species. So what does this all mean? We have to build a home for this Gillen's monitor with scorching heat. These little monitors come from central Australia, where the temperatures are usually very dry and very hot. They are mostly arboreal lizards, which means they spend most of their time climbing in large sturdy trees like the mulga or desert oak tree. This of course means we need trees. This is our tank to start. As you can see, I have an old cork background on the back, but I'll switch that out later. We begin with our base to this environment, this substrate. I have a sand, cocoa fiber, and topsoil mix that we pour in. There's no need to use a drainage layer in this tank because the plants and lizard do not require much water, and we don't have to worry about overwatering or soaking. This substrate is extremely important to create life. 
Everything from the plants to the lizard to the microfauna rely on this substrate. The substrate was a little bit too dry to start, so I added water and then began mixing it up. Now to add our important trees that all the creatures will rely on. This tree is only about a foot tall, but the trunk is extremely sturdy, which means it's quite old and is likely storing water for possible drought scenarios. Then we'll add the Dracaena trees to provide cover and protection for the monitor. I forgot to mention, this Gillen's monitor has five limbs. Well, not actually five limbs, but four limbs and a prehensile tail. This means the monitor can use its tail to actually grip and climb trees. I love the ways the trees are positioned, but we need more climbing space for the monitor. So I'm going to add these branches. The first branch I stick vertically in the enclosure, and then the second branch I lay horizontally across the top and secure it properly. Now to add our biodegradable life to this dry jungle floor. We first add these giant sea grape leaves. Look at the size of these. These will slowly be broken down, but will also be used by shelter by various creatures. Now to cover this dry jungle floor completely with smaller dead leaf litter. It couldn't be a dry jungle floor without fallen leaves everywhere. The Gillen's monitor is actually so small that the leaves can offer a hiding place for the lizard when he decides to come down to ground level. Dead leaves not only look awesome, but they will return nutrients to the substrate for the plants eventually. Let's go ahead and add our microfauna. Microfauna are small organisms that break down animal and plant matter, which is super beneficial to plants as they take in that broken down nutrients and it helps them flourish. Remember from high school science class, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only converted from one form to another. In a true ecosystem, nothing is wasted. It's time to swap out the cork background and use a real cork bark background instead. I figured the regular cork background would work fine, but I really don't like how it looks. Now, it looks as if the back of the enclosure is a massive quercus tree or a cork bark tree in the wild. Last but not least is our moss. We have live Spanish moss to hang from branches. This moss is found in warmer climates and hangs from trees in the wild. Time to add the Gillen's monitor. He's a bit squirmish and eager to get in his new enclosure, but finally, he's in. This enclosure will serve as a forest and desert ecosystem for this little dinosaur. Near the forest floor, the humidity is highest, with critters crawling under the leaves and an essential water source below. As we move up, the plants and branches occupy most of the space. We have sturdy branches for climbing and hanging mosses for cover. But above the canopy top, we enter scorching heat from another planet. Our sun in this enclosure is an intense basking light. No living organisms can exist directly under the light. Not even moss, but the dinosaur can. One problem with living in extreme heat is it becomes much more difficult to find water. And in the wild, water equals life. The Gillen's ability to store water is amazing, but eventually he does need water along with the plants. Days and weeks could pass by without rainfall, but when rainfall does occur, it brings new life. Unlike the Komodo dragon or other giant monitor lizards, this Gillen's monitor cannot take down large mammals as prey. This Gillen's dinosaur has to be more creative with its smaller size. The Gillen's primarily lives in the tree branches and canopy tops, but if a food source is below, he won't hesitate. Monitor lizards have an incredible sense of smell through their tongue. 
Yes, they smell through their tongue, which we can't even really begin to comprehend. Our Gillen's monitor may just hit the jackpot. Eggs. Finding a nest of eggs for a monitor lizard is unimaginably special. These are quail eggs. Perhaps the mother has left the nest alone to find food, but it's only a matter of time until she returns. The Gillens becomes restless and locks on to the scent of the eggs. Then he moves in. He finds the eggs and he immediately begins to open the eggs up to get the important yolk where all the nutrients is. These quail eggs are quite small, but they still require a lot of work for this little Gillen's monitor to consume. But it is worth it. Packed with nutrients, finding a nest of eggs could be the difference between starvation and survival in the wild. Grabbing chunks of the egg yolk, he feasts on this special finding. Then he lifts his head up to properly swallow the food. After consuming most of the egg, he retreats, wary of the quail mother returning. The beautiful irony of nature is that an egg can be a sign of life for one animal and be a desperate meal for another. However, for many monitor lizards, finding nests of eggs is not a consistent food source. Along the leaf-covered jungle floor, this small female cricket is walking around, looking for food or perhaps a water source. This is a pretty regular day for a cricket. Until she begins climbing. The cricket climbs and climbs and is entering a deadly territory. You see, insects don't have a strong scent like eggs, so the cricket is safe as long as she stays hidden. But she makes a costly mistake and walks into the open. And before she can react, the dinosaur grabs her. The powerful bite of the monitor grips onto the cricket and he begins rubbing the cricket back and forth against the tree to rip apart the exoskeleton. This is the brutal ending of the cricket but necessary for the Gillen's monitor so he can properly swallow the insect. Whatever that cricket has eaten in the last couple days the monitor will now ingest which is essentially the food chain in the wild. After a successful day of finding food the little dinosaur retreats to cover as night approaches. Today he was able to find food, but no prey is guaranteed and every day challenges this little dinosaur's survival skills. Didn't I tell you dinosaurs still exist? Thanks for watching. There are tons of mysterious creatures to still explore, so make sure to subscribe as we uncover hidden ecosystems and lost worlds.